So there we go. Good evening, everyone. We are going to get started. I'd like to welcome you to Hawkinson High School. My name is Andy Scudo. I am the principal here at Hawkinson High School. I'm very excited to be in the class of 2023. That doesn't make me feel old at all. Um, I'm really excited you're here. We are excited to share information about our school and what we're doing, all the things we're trying to do to help students have a great high school experience. We spend a lot of time working on uh, building culture and helping students enjoy high school as much as possible. So today we're going to have the counselors talk to you about the academic side, the classes, the credits, uh, but also clubs and activities that you can participate in and they have quite a bit packed into the presentation, so I'm gonna hand it over to them, uh, but I wanna share one caveat. As many of you know, our levy failed when we voted on it um, a few weeks ago. So I'm only saying that because if levy doesn't pass again, I don't know if we're gonna offer everything that we talked about today, because it's a budget thing. If we don't have a levy, we don't have the money. If we don't have the money, we can't run some of these programs. So I'm not promising everything you see today will actually be in place next year. Obviously we hope so, but be aware that that, that is a, an issue that we may have to address. So I'm gonna pass it over um, to our counselors. Uh, Mr. Kimber is gonna speak first. He works with the students at the beginning of the alphabet. Mr. Pace will speak at some point. He works with students at the end of the alphabet. Ms. Miller is our college and career counselor, so she's gonna work with you on High School Beyond Plan what happens after high school, all that kind of stuff. I'd also like to introduce Mr. Johnson. He is our assistant principal and athletic director. So if you have questions about sports at the high school level, once we finish the presentation, he would be a good guy to contact for that. Again, freshmen, I look forward to working with you. This is a really good school to be in. I've been in a lot of high schools. This really is a great place to be, whether it feels like it all the time or not. So um, go Rox, I look forward to working with you. Mr. Kimber. All right, but yeah, thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, is the volume being here? Can you guys hear okay? In the back, thumbs up, or are we good? Okay, cool. Um, so this is my fourth year at Hawkinson High School, and this is my seventh year as a high school counselor, and I've learned over the years that there's one, actually two things, that I can count on every single year for sure. One of those things is nervous eighth graders, and the other thing is nervous parents of eighth graders. So I imagine that's why a lot of you are here right now, because um, you're, especially if you haven't had any kids go through the high school system before, you're thinking, okay, we're talking about things like college, and uh, it used to be, for those of you that are students, what do I want to be when I grow up? That point, is, you, feel like, you might feel like it's coming pretty soon. And um, I'm hoping that the information we give you guys tonight will at least uh, calm some of those anxieties a little bit, and, um, and just reassure you, give you some more information so you, you can build a little bit more of a roadmap um, to get where you want to be. So um, we are going to cover, um, I'll hit the agenda in the next slide here. We already went over the introductions. So again, my name is uh, Brian Kimber. I'm one of the counselors here. Um, so in your hands, uh, most of you should have that single sheet. Uh, it has the agenda on one side. Um, as well as some, uh, there are some notes at the bottom, and then on the right-hand column of that, you can, if you want to take some notes from tonight's presentation, uh, feel free to do so. And then on the back of that, what do we have on the back of that sheet? Forecasting. Forecasting. Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, we have that four-year plan, so if you want to kind of start sketching things out. Please know it's not a requirement that you need to have that whole thing finished by tonight. That's a lot to ask, and I think we may be dealing with some panic attacks by the end of the night if, if we require you to have all four years end up tonight. So um, sometimes we like just to sketch that out, though, and start thinking about how am I going to plan these things out, especially if you are, there's a lot of classes you want to take while you're in high school. So um, I won't get too deep into that right now, but um, just by way of agenda, uh, we are going to touch on graduation requirements. Uh, we'll look at ninth grade at a glimpse, so what you can expect as a freshman at Hawkinson High School. Um, some of our core course pathways are English, math, science, social studies. Um, some of the other academic opportunities that we have. Uh, how to get involved, how to be successful. And then we'll touch on forecasting, because uh, it was advertised part of what we're doing tonight is actually picking classes as well. 
Uh, we're just combining everything into one uh, big event here tonight. So I'm going to dive in so we have plenty of time to get through all of that. So whenever uh, I am talking to um, incoming students, current students, uh, current seniors, whatever it might be, I like to talk about graduation requirements. I feel like I talk about it an awful lot, but you have to realize this is kind of your roadmap to get from uh, starting in Hawkinson High School to walking across that stage and getting your diploma. Um, you don't just do your time here, do four years, and then we let you go with that diploma. There's actually those requirements that you have to fulfill. Um, part of them are these credit requirements. Um, so you will get more information on this. Uh, you'll get a program of study. Um, I think once we head over to the library, we'll have course descriptions and all of that. So this is just, again, a very uh, brief view on what credits are required. We do require you to take English all four years here in high school. That is a requirement. Um, so you need four credits there. You're earning one credit per year or half a credit per semester. That's across the board. Um, social studies, you're going to need three credits, so you'll need three years of that. Math, you need three years. Science, you also need three years. Career and technical education, you're looking at one credit there, so two semesters of career or uh, tech ed classes. You need three semesters of PE, so one and a half credits there. Uh, you need a semester of health, two credits of fine arts and two credits of world language. Um, as you get on in high school, you'll hear more about the personalized pathway. That's a new thing that um, the state of Washington implemented a couple of years ago. And um, that's something we'll deal with more once you get to uh, your uh, 10th or 11th grade year. We can have that conversation. You can substitute some of those credits out um, in fine arts and world language. Electives, you will need four credits there. That just kind of fills you up with 24 total credits. Washington State History, we put that on there. Many of you, um, if, you, if you've been in the middle school here or if you were at another middle school but in the state of Washington, you probably already took it and passed it. So uh, if you didn't, we'll work, on, we'll work with that as well. But um, we just put that because that is a graduation requirement. So 24 total credits. If you take and pass all of your classes, including focus, which I'll get to in a couple slides, what focus is, um, you will graduate. If you have a standard schedule, you'll be looking at about 26 credits. So you've got a little bit of a cushion there, but my best piece of advice for you is don't plan on using it, okay? Just uh, best plan is the plan to succeed and pass your classes, okay? Um, okay, so one piece of the uh, graduation puzzle is credits. Another piece is assessment, and people always get so excited about this, myself included. Um, many of you have probably already taken the Smarter Balance test. Uh, in uh, middle school. You will take it in high school as well um, for both ELA and math, so that's your English language arts and math. Those are two tests. You'll take them starting in 10th grade. If you don't pass one or both of them that year, uh, you'll have the opportunity to retake them uh, your junior year as well. Um, and then for science, there's the WCAS, that's the Washington Comprehensive Assessment of Science. It's relatively new. Um, we just piloted it last year, so we're still kind of learning about it, but um, that is coming down the pipeline and it will be a graduation requirement for those of you that are incoming freshmen. Um, so, but as far as your freshman year goes, there's not gonna be any state testing at that point, so it's not something you need to worry about quite yet, but just have it on your radar. Okay, so I'm gonna jump into the sample ninth grade schedule. Um, and this should mirror pretty closely what's on the back of that piece of paper you have. Um, we really have taken uh, a lot of the guessing work out of you, uh, or out of your freshman year, um, so that there aren't too many choices you have to make. Really what we are trying to do is make it so we're setting you uh, up for, especially in your 11th and 12th grade year, so that you have um, as many choices as possible, so that we get some, we front load some of those other requirements so you're getting those out of the way. Um, so you may not feel like you have a lot of options in your freshman year, and that is true, but it is so that um, you have more options your junior and senior year, and as we'll get to in a bit, um, you do have more opportunities available to you those years anyway. Um, so, and obviously this is not the order that your day will necessarily look like. You're not all going to have English first period or something like that, but um, you will all have English 9 um, all year. Uh, you'll all be in either algebra or geometry. That depends on what you have been taking um, in middle school. We get teacher recommendations on that. So um, I believe you've already been placed 
And yeah, so when you open up Skyward to look at classes, your math class will already be there. Okay, so you don't even have to worry about picking that. All freshmen take Integrated Science 1. Um, that's, that's just across the board. And then uh, in that first elective spot, you'll see Health or PE and the same thing the second semester. Um, so how it'll work, when you get into Skyward, uh, there will be a semester of Health there. We've already picked that for you. We just have all freshmen take that. So you'll get that requirement done right away. And then uh, the opposite semester, you'll take a PE class. That wasn't picked for you in Skyward, so you'll still be picking that. Um, so you may have health first semester, you might have it second semester, and then PE opposite of that, but you can plan on that your freshman year. Um, one of your other elective spots, uh, world language. Uh, that if you are currently doing world language, we actually already put you in a world language for your freshman year. So if you're doing Spanish or French right now, that first year, we already put you in the second year of it for high school. Um, you can remove it, I, so, but the assumption is kind of that if you're doing that in middle school, I'm assuming that you're gonna wanna go ahead and do the second year of it uh, once you get here. So uh, if that is the case, you have one more hour for an elective, whether that be band, whether that be another art class or a social studies um, or a tech class, you get to make that choice. Um, and I would suggest that as you're making that choice, you be thinking about what your graduation requirements are. Don't front load yourself too much with one thing so that you're taking all of your social studies toward the end, uh, but you do get to make that choice as a freshman. Okay. Daily schedule, I just put this up here because people kind of like to know, okay, cool, when do I go to school? And do you guys start at the same time, later, earlier? We're not all that different from the middle school. Um, I think you guys start at 8.50 if I'm correct. So we're just 10 minutes later. Um, so we start at nine o'clock, we have 50 minute class periods, two lunch periods, um, and we get out at 3.30. Wednesdays, we get out early, uh, like we did today, so we get out at 2.30. Um, and then you'll see the focus period on there, that is from 10.50 to 11.20. Um, I'm gonna skip ahead to the next slide because all the classes are 50 minutes on a normal day, again, with the exception of Wednesday where you're gonna have slightly shorter classes. Focus is a 30 minute uh, class period that everybody has at the same time, so, which is really nice because the purpose of focus is so that you can get help in classes, if you need to work with a teacher to retake a test or make up an assignment. Um, you can just get help from other teachers if you're struggling in a class. All the teachers have focus at the same time, which is a huge advantage to you, um, so that you're not, so that you have access to all of your teachers during that time. You can get a pass, go see them. We also have the learning center, as well as the writing center where you can get tutoring from your peers. Um, this year we have help in all subjects. Uh, so we have students that have gone through uh, kind of a vetting process and uh, they have been trained as mentors or as uh, tutors. And that's just centered in the library right now. So it's a great resource. We also use Focus for credit recovery. Should you fail a class, we have some options there, some flexibility built into our day. But, this is 30 minutes where you are, uh, you have the opportunity to earn a quarter credit for each semester. It's a very easy quarter credit to get as long as you do what you're supposed to do, okay? That's my best piece of advice. Use this to your advantage. This is not something that every high school has, um, and it really does give you an advantage over, you know, the, the average high school student where you have 30 minutes, you have access to your teachers, and it's just dedicated time to get caught up in your classes. So, and this is good for parents to know as well too, that those 30 minutes are built into your day, or into your uh, kid's day. So, um, that, I, I just wanted to make sure I made mention of focus. So some of the pathways, and uh, again, we're looking ahead, uh, just from the scope of all four years here, uh, kind of what you can expect, looking uh, from ninth grade through 12th grade. It does get a little bit more, you'll see this over each slide, it, um, more options open up, things might get a little more complicated as each year goes by. It is pretty simple, generally ninth and 10th grade. Um, it's pretty prescribed what you're going to do. Um, but then as you move on, you can kind of decide where, which direction you want to go, you get more choices there. Um, you can make those decisions based on what you've already done, okay? So uh, when we're looking at the English department, ninth grade is pretty simple, English nine, okay? So there's not a whole lot of choice there. Uh, once you get on to 10th grade, you'll have the option of doing traditional English 10 and also honors English 10. Uh, that will also come with teacher recommendations. So 
Um, you can elect to do those things, but it would, if you're hoping to do honors, it would be in your best interest to also do well in English 9. 11th grade, uh, we have American Lit and Composition, that's your traditional English 11 class. Um, and then you'll also see AP Language and Composition, so you're going to see some more AP options open up, which we'll talk about, I think we'll, we have a slide about AP in a little while. So, um, you have the option between those two classes. Now, and what I want to make clear here also is that it's not that you're picking one particular track up there and sticking to it straight across. You can go English 10 to AP, uh, that you're not stuck on one track, okay? So you will have those choices. 12th grade, this is something new we're trying next year, or with our, uh, with our seniors next year. We're breaking English 12 up into a couple different focuses or a couple different uh, particular, they focus on different topics. So you'll see contemporary literature and writing studio, and then below that, contemporary literature and critical media analysis and composition, okay? So um, essentially, the, the literature piece there is gonna be the same for each focus, but uh, you can pick a writing studio focus or a critical media analysis and composition focus. Uh, so one of those semesters would be either uh, writing studio or the media analysis. There's also AP Literature and Composition, which is a second year AP English class. Okay, Science Pathways, again, ninth grade, pretty simple. You are gonna be in Integrated Science 1. Uh, once you get to 10th grade, you can either go into Integrated Science 2, which is where I would say the majority of students will go. It's kind of the natural uh, progression. Um, AP Biology will also open up as an option that year, so if you are feeling like you want that challenge in the science uh, department, then AP Bio might be a good option for you. Um, 11th grade, you're going to start to see more options. We don't even have all of them listed here right now, but um, if you were on an integrated science 2 track, you'd be looking at, um, you could go into an AP Science such as AP, you could do AP Bio, you could do AP Physics, AP Environmental. Um, or another science elective like chemistry or physics, we have those at non-AP levels. Um, and then once you get into senior year, uh, it's going to be fairly similar. It really depends on what you took your junior year, that'll uh, determine what you can take your senior year. Um, so if you took chemistry your junior year, you could take physics your senior year, you could take AP environmental. If you took AP environmental your junior year, you could, you could take any of those other options. So, uh, freshman and sophomore year are pretty straightforward, but you will get more options as 11th and 12th grade come. Social studies as a whole is fairly simple. Ninth grade, you're actually not required to take any social studies classes. I would suggest that you think about taking at least one semester of social studies, because like I said, you need three credits of social studies. Two of those credits are going to come during 11th and 12th grade. Uh, your junior year, you'll take a full year of U.S. history whether that's traditional U.S. history or AP U.S. history. And then in 12th grade, you'll take contemporary world issues or AP comparative government, or comparative uh, world government. That um, would take the place of CWI. So that's gonna take care of two of your credits. I typically advise people plan on getting that extra one credit of social studies done freshman and or sophomore year so that you're not doubling up your junior, senior year. Um, which we can still do if it comes to that, but um, you'll see in the program of studies once you get it, there's options uh, like psychology, general psychology, developmental psychology, ancient world history, modern world history, world geography. These are all one semester classes, so you can kind of uh, mix and match those as you like, okay? So um, as you're forecasting today, it might be something you think about, signing up for a semester of that. Um, and then the last pathway I'm gonna cover is math. In ninth grade, again, we already placed you on this. Um, if you have an issue with your placement, um, you can talk to us or talk to uh, Mrs. Ambrose. We can um, look at that. This was uh, based on what you are doing right now, so it, for, it should, be, it should uh, be the right placement for all of you. Um, but you'll be looking at either algebra or geometry. Um, we do have the honors geometry option as well if, if you're interested in that. Um, going into 10th grade, the thing with math, it's very sequential, as you probably know. So uh, what you take in ninth grade, it's really going to determine what you take for the rest of high school because uh, you can't really skip around and do different things because they build on one another. But uh, the sequence is algebra, geometry, algebra two, 
And then after that, you get kind of like science, you get to pick where you go a little bit after that. A lot of students go pre-calculus, maybe up to AP calculus, but we'll also, we're forecasting for intro to computer science and intro to college math. These are not classes that you'll be forecasting for as a freshman. These are just things that you'll be looking at in the future. So you're looking at algebra and geometry at this point, but this is what you can expect as you go on. We require three years of math. Um, if you're looking at the college route, you would probably want to plan on taking four years of math, okay? Okay, I'm gonna pass it off to Jen Miller. All right, so your main focus tonight is on ninth grade, but we do want you to be thinking ahead. As Brian mentioned, if you plan well as a ninth and 10th grader, get all those requirements out of the way, then it leaves room in your schedule as an 11th and 12th grader. And he mentioned uh, that at that point, you'll have some new things, some new options. So I'm just gonna go through those real quick so you know what's coming up later. AP is uh, the first option that you see up there. AP stands for Advanced Placement. Those are college level rigorous courses. So if your student's looking for a challenge, then they might be interested in AP classes. They take a test at the end of the year and based on their score and the college that they go to, they might earn college credit. I'm gonna skip Cascadia Tech because we have a slide on that. Running Start is a Washington State program that allows juniors and seniors to go to their local community college to earn college credit at the same time as they're earning their high school credit. And then the last option that you see up there is work-based learning. So that's an opportunity for students to go to work during the school day. So they'll have one or two periods off where they'll go to work and earn credit. So Cascadia Tech is a cooperative with all of our local school districts. So uh, all school districts have the opportunity to send students there. We all are part owners in it. And it happens during the school day. So there's a bus that takes students to Cascadia Tech and then they can take the bus back. Uh, then they continue on with the rest of their day, take the rest of their credits. They can participate in sports and other activities just like all the other students. Uh, the programs that you see up here are what are currently offered. Sometimes those change over time based on current industry needs or uh, they'll tweak programs a little bit. Uh, but those are the current offerings that Cascadia Tech has right now. The high school and beyond plan you're probably already familiar with because students start this in middle school. It's a working live document that students update every year online. You have access to it as well through uh, your own Skyward password. But the reason why it's here, mixed in with all these other slides, it's because it's really a chance for students to think about what they want to do in the future, start doing some planning, and then they can take classes while they're in high school that will help them reach those goals. So we really encourage students to not just breeze through the high school beyond plan, but really take it seriously and start planning out their future. Obviously your students have lots of, lots of options after high school. Our goal is to prepare students for whatever option they choose. So one of the nice things about that new uh, graduation requirements is that it gives every single student a college and career ready transcript. So in the past, if a student uh, as a freshman or sophomore didn't think they were gonna go on to a four-year university and they chose not to take those two years of world language, they wouldn't be able to change their mind later. So if they you know, decided as a senior, oh yeah, I do wanna go to a four-year university, that wouldn't be an option because they didn't take those two years. With those new college, um, high school graduation requirements, every student will now have a college and career ready transcript and all the doors will be open. None of the doors will be closed to them in their future. All right, so clubs and activities. Some of the clubs that you see up here are um, partnered with specific classes or with academic programs, and other ones that you see up here are based on student interests, so they're just for fun. So there's lots of different choices up there. This year we had a lot of new clubs get formed, um, purely based on student interest. So if a student wants to start a club, they go through the process and the paperwork, they find a, a nice staff member who will volunteer their time to be there with them and um, then they can create a new club. So if there's something that you are really interested in and you don't see it up here, that's something that you can think about for next year. All right, so next up is Mr. Johnson. 
just for one slide. Um, there's a lot of information coming at you, and I can tell by the glazed looks on your faces, you're just absorbing all of it. And I appreciate you taking the time to, to be here tonight um, and to do that. Please rest assured that we are here to answer all these questions all the time. So if you if you don't hear what uh, you think you heard or you have questions about it, please just contact us and we will be more than happy to, to go over this with you. Um, I am the athletic director here as well as the assistant principal. Uh, high school athletics works a little bit differently than middle school athletics. It is a highly competitive interscholastic sport. Uh, we do have cuts, um, so some students who want to have their heart set on playing a sport, they may not make that cut that first year. Then they have to choose something else. But we want them to keep trying, we want them to keep participating as much as possible. So we don't, we don't cut when we don't have to. So as you'll notice up here <clears throat> in the fall, there's lots of opportunities for boys and girls to be playing different sports. Uh, boys golf, cross country, football uh, are all non-cut sports. I'm sorry, boys golf is cut. Cross country and football are non-cut sports. So if you have an athlete that wants to go out for one of those, they are more than welcome to go and they will do their best and they will try hard and they will compete uh, to the best of the ability and represent the Hawks with pride. So we encourage them to please go out. Uh, boys golf is limited, so there are cuts there. Uh, girls soccer is also limited, but we have three teams. We're lucky enough to carry three teams. So we have a, a varsity, a JV, and a C team for that. Uh, girls swimming is a non-cut sport, uh, but it is off-site. Um, practices vary. We take place at the YMCA. Practices take place at the YMCA. So uh, transportation is an issue for some of our younger students who don't drive yet. So keep that in mind. And then volleyball also has three teams, um, varsity, junior varsity, and C team. Uh, in the winter, we have boys and girls basketball, which is a cut sport, but we have three teams. Boys swimming, uh, which is not cut, and wrestling, which is not cut. Uh, and then in the springtime, you can see that uh, baseball is a cut sport, soccer is a cut sport, fast pitch, softball, uh, and girls golf are all cut sports, but the other ones are not. So it is imperative that you encourage your athletes, uh, your students, to participate in athletics. Uh, we want students to be more connected to the school and a great way to connect to, to their peers as well as upperclassmen and get to know uh, the values, the core values that we have at around Hawk Athletics is to participate in those sports. Uh, I will be here all night. If you have questions about that, please stop by and see me. I'm more than happy to talk to you about it. Thank you. Yeah, one slide. All right. Okay, so as Mr. Johnson said, I know we've been throwing a lot of information at you, um, and some of that is like, hey, what's four years from now, and even past that, and I know it's, it's sometimes it's even hard to uh, think about what's going to happen next week or the rest of this year. Um, we do want to focus on um, how to be successful, though. Okay, you're coming into high school, and I know I used to work in middle school for a long time, and I know middle school kind of attitudes and kind of the mentality is the middle school doesn't count so i'm not going to give my full effort i'm just going to turn it on once i get to high school and let me tell you that doesn't always work it's not that easy to just turn it on in high school okay so you still have a good part i mean we're only in february there's a good part of this year left so one of the one things i want to really want to mention to you is finish this year strong Finish this year strong so that you're ready to come into high school and be successful. And let me tell you some reasons why you want to be successful. Um, research has shown that ninth grade is the most important factor in graduating on time. Okay? And that means you want to graduate with the rest of your class of 23. Okay? You want to do that in four years. Um, I'll just kind of explain this a little bit if you can't see it too well. Um, but it's talking about the amount of credits you've earned. Mr. Kimber was talking about credits as what you earn when you pass a class. You pass a semester, you get half a credit. You pass a year, you get a whole credit, okay? If you are missing, so you have a chance to earn six and a half credits, okay? If you earn six or six and a half credits in your freshman year, you have a 93% chance of graduating on time. That's just by all the research that's been done. And 93% actually were above that the last couple of years, but that's kind of our graduation rate, right around 95%, okay? And then it drops down, you see the yellow area? When you start failing a semester or failing a whole year of a class, you're dropping down into 76 and 70% chance of graduating on time. Now we have ways to get you caught up. And I tell people all the time, I meet with freshmen, I meet with sophomores, and we talk about how 
you know, one mistake or one failed class is not going to doom you, but it doesn't mean you have to work harder. You have to work a little harder, you got to put in a little extra work, you may have to retake a class in order to get caught up. So your best bet is just to pass the first time. Put in that effort that it takes, okay? So how do you do that? Some success tips for you, okay? One of the things, and this is for students, I've got a slide for you parents as well, uh, but this is for students, how to be successful. This is like how to do school, how to, how to be a student, okay? If you haven't picked that up in middle school already, which I hope you have, they do a good job of teaching you some of these skills, these are the things you're gonna wanna work on when you come into high school. One of them is paying attention, not just to your teachers. We're not talking about just paying attention in class and listening to what's going on. Uh, we're talking about paying attention to what's going on around the school, okay? One of the things you can really pay attention to and need to pay attention to is Schoology. Okay, that's our learning management system where a lot of our teachers are putting a lot of the work on there. Um, we just had uh, professional development. One of our teachers was showing our other teachers how that they can give pretty much instant feedback through Schoology on how you're doing on an assignment. They were talking about an English paper where the teacher could go in and make edits and say, hey, look at this and fix this before you turn in a final product. And that's a really huge advantage, but if you're not going on there and you're not looking, you're not gonna have that advantage and you may be turning in something that's less than your best quality work, okay? So Schoology, pay attention to that. Pay attention to the announcements that happen. We do announcements at the beginning of focus class every day. So make sure you pay attention to those. Otherwise, you're like, I don't know. Like, we have spring sports starting on Monday, next Monday. And uh, there's a lot of kids already who are like, they haven't been listening to the announcements. We've been telling them to go get cleared for spring sports to make sure you're cleared. And they're going to miss the first, or first two days of practice because they're not cleared, because they weren't paying attention to the announcements. Um, newsletters come out. Students, you can read the newsletter too. It's not just for your parents. Okay, it's okay if you check that out. Um, emails. Okay, show of hands, how many students actually check your email? That's not all of you. Okay. It's always funny when I'm helping a student and then all of a sudden they say, hey, well, that was emailed to you. And then we say, let's look at your email. And you know how that little red indicator on there of the number? It's really interesting when that number is three digits. Okay. And have students with like 150 unread emails and all that. That is how teachers, administrators, counselors, we communicate that way. We're not going to Snapchat you. We're not going to get into your DM on Instagram. We're not going to do that. Okay. We're going to email you information from the school. Okay. So make sure you check those emails. There's important stuff in there. Okay. Um, and then students, listen to your parents. They do know something, okay? They have been here before. Yes, school is different. I understand school is not the same as it was when your parents or when we were in school, but they still know something. They've been through this before, okay? And they're not just out to get you. It's like your teachers aren't out to get you. All the adults in your life are not out to get you. We are trying to help you, okay? We want to help you be successful and we want to help you have a good time and really, the, the best time you can have in high school is when things are going well. When things are not going well, I mean, in a couple of years, some of you are gonna be pushing 16, right? And what happens when you get to be 16? Driving, and then what happens when your grades get bad? Then you don't drive. <laughs> then your car gets taken away, all that. I heard somebody talk about insurance too. Yes, you get that B average, your parents get that break on the insurance. And if you're like me as a parent, a lot of those parents are passing those insurance costs down to your kids and having them pay part of their insurance. So you want that to be as low as possible. So those are the things to pay attention to. Make sure you pay attention to those things. Um, be consistent. Be consistent, okay? It's not enough to put in a whole bunch of effort right at the end of the semester. Okay, sometimes it's too little too late. So the best bet to be successful is to put in a consistent effort throughout the semester, throughout the whole year. Come in, start off well. I was just talking to a student in my office the other day and one of the things we talked about was it's a lot easier to keep up than it is to catch up. So if you start, if you just turn in your assignments, if you don't dig yourself a big hole, 
then it's a lot easier to come in a semester and you're not stressed out and your parents and your teachers and your counselors are stressed out. Everybody's stressed out. So just don't do it. Be consistent. And then show up. And that's not just attendance. Attendance is important. Make sure you show up to school. Okay, because things happen whether you're here or not. Things happen when you're here and when you're not here, things are still happening. So make sure you show up to school. But when you are here at school, make sure you're here mentally, not just physically. Okay? Sometimes it's easy to get in class and to check out and the phone's a distraction and the iPads are a distraction and what's happening outside the window is a distraction. Okay? But show up mentally and physically. Okay? Um, the last thing on here for students is to get and stay organized. So be organized. Whatever your organization system is, use it. And an organization system, lots of them work different for different people. Some people have a three ring binder, some people have folders, um, some people have one of those accordion folders, some like to use an actual planner and write things down. Um, they look fashionably like on paper. Some people do that. But one thing that doesn't work is taking that paper that's handed to you and just crumbling it up in the bottom of your backpack. Okay? I know I've known too many students whose backpack is like a black hole. Things go in, but they never come out. Okay? It was really telling. I had a student last year that I was working with on trying to be organized. And we sat in my office and we just took his backpack and just dumped it upside down on my floor. And I won't even tell you everything that came out of there, but it wasn't all schoolwork, okay? But there was a lot of crumpled up schoolwork in there. There were assignments that were half done, there were assignments that were completely done and not turned in. Okay, and if you don't turn an assignment in, you guys know what happens, you don't get credit. Okay, so find an organization system that works for you. Find something that works for you. Um, and just this little adage that if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. Okay, and part of what we're doing tonight in the forecasting process is planning. We're planning for next year. And some of you were even starting to think about what's gonna happen after that. Maybe you're thinking about, I wanna set myself up really well so I can take advantage of one of these cool opportunities that Mr. Kimber and Mrs. Miller were talking about. Cascadia Tech or Running Start or work-based learning. Those kind of neat things. So make sure you're planning. Okay, now parents. Some tips for you too, okay? It's high school, you're not done. <laughs> Appreciate you all being here tonight. That is awesome that you are all here. And sometimes I know as parents, I have two high schoolers myself, and I know as a high school parent that you feel like you're kind of left out a little bit, and that everything is directed at the students, and you're like, what can I do? There's no PTA, there's no, you know, I don't go help in the classroom anymore like I did in elementary school. There's lots of ways that you can help your student be successful. Okay? And I want to encourage you to do that, whether they want you to or not. Okay? Um, first thing is show up. And you guys are here. You guys are here. You're showing up to the very first high school activity. Okay? So that's awesome. Make sure you show up to that. Um, show up to conferences. We do conferences twice a year. There's like the middle school. Um, come to the conferences. We'll do, we do two different types of conferences. One is referral conferences. That is where somebody at school will get a hold of you and request that you come into a conference. It's usually not a pleasant one for your student, okay? Just to give you a hint there. And then we do arena conferencing too, where it's just open for you to come in and go around and talk to whatever teachers you want to talk about and have them hear what you they have to say about your student, okay? So come to those conferences twice a year. Um, come to the activities. Whatever they're doing, whether it's a band concert, or it's a play, or it's a sporting event, um, or it's a different competition, one of the clubs we have is FBLA, um, mock trial, those are things that your, your students could be participating in. Come to those things. It's okay to be there. They may tell you they don't want you there, but come anyway, okay? Because they may not admit it, but they, they like it that you're there, okay? Um, I have a BTS down there. One of the things that we're trying to do is we are working on planning a uh, large back to school event. Okay, one of the things we've done in the past is we have a, just kind of a morning, a couple of mornings where kids come in and get their schedules, get their pictures taken, and that's kind of like, here's high school. 
Well, we would like to take it and make it something a little bit bigger. Okay, and so our goal, um, so that's just kind of a teaser out there. Keep your, keep your ears open for that. Watch for the announcements and mail and, and email for that. But we would like to do a large um, event come fall that will bring the whole school together and just get us energized to start the school year. Um, so that's one of the things. Um, boosters is a way to be involved. I talk about how there's no PTSA. Boosters will have a table out in the commons. So make sure you stop by that. That's a good way for parents to get involved, whether it's sports or band or whatever. They contribute to all of our activities at the school, not just the sports. So they help out with a lot of things. So make sure you uh, do that. Um, the next thing is talk about school. Talk to your child about school and listen to. Okay? Ask them what's going on. One of, the, one of the biggest tips I give to parents all the time is that when your child comes home, don't ask them whether they have homework or not. That is a yes or no question, and it's gonna get an answer of probably no, okay? So don't say, do you have homework? The big thing is, what schoolwork do you have to work on? It's an open-ended question. It leads them to tell you, tell, have them tell you about their day. What was the best thing that happened? What was the worst thing that happened? Sometimes days have good and bad things, and it's good to hear about both of those, okay? So talk about school. Um, encourage your child to take some ownership in their education. They are coming into high school, and we want parents still involved, but we are going to do a lot of things where we talk to your um, students about taking responsibility for their own education. So if you can emphasize that too, that's huge, okay? Because as, as parents of teenagers have learned over the years, students are more likely to do something if they think it's their idea, okay, rather than an adult telling them what to do. Okay. So I encourage them to take some ownership um, with that. So also for you, checking the communication methods, um, the Schoology, um, the uh, Skyward, the email, the newsletters, um, those kind of things, stay informed as to what's happening in school, whether it's different events or whether something's coming up, whether it's a, that's a dance or you have to sign up for the PTSAT or anything that's coming up. Just make sure you stay informed. Check those things with that. And don't feel... Don't be afraid to contact us. Don't be afraid to contact us. Whether it's the counselors, we are always available, administrators are available for you, um, and the teachers are available too. Just go ahead and send them an email. It's really easy, it's first name, dot, last name. You can find them all on the website, all their emails, shoot them an email, okay? With that, um, don't be afraid. I have a lot of parents who are sending out group emails on a, some week they might say, just how do my student do this week? And they'll send it out to all six of their teachers just to find out what's going on or maybe have a question about what's happening in class. Maybe you've checked a grade and you're not sure and your student's telling you one story and you're just not sure. Check with the teacher. Check with the teacher. Um, and feel free. Um, Brian and I, we can be huge points of contact for you. If you have a question about something, just let us know. We can either answer it or we can direct you in the right way to go. So that is just some success tips. As we're thinking about moving into high school, we want to make it successful. Like that chart I showed you, start off well. We want to start off well and continue well. Um, Mrs. Miller mentioned about not closing any doors and having all those opportunities open to you. That starts with your freshman year, okay? So I'm gonna go backwards a little bit. I'm gonna explain what's gonna happen here in this next step of tonight. And that is the forecasting process, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to be moving from here and we're going to be moving into the library where we have, um, we have all our forecasting materials set up. We've got computers there if you need to use them. I see a lot of students with iPads and that's great. We have forecast sheets. We've got programs of study. And the program of study is, is a, a description of all the courses. So we went through, um, you know, Mr. Kimber went through kind of the sequences on the major subjects, math and English and science. Um, but in those programs of study that we have in the library um, are descriptions of all the classes, um, PE classes, drama classes, art classes, um, all of our elective classes are, have uh, course descriptions in there. So you know what you're signing up for, okay? So, and this is a forecast sheet. What this is, is kind of a, your rough draft. This is your forecasting rough draft. Okay, we'll have those there. I think they're, Ms. Graham, are they yellow? They're yellow, okay, which is your class color, by the way. 
Yellow will be your color all the way through for four years. Um, and so she's great at make sure for casting sheets yellow, <laughs> okay, to keep that. Um, so that's your rough draft. Use that to pencil things in before you actually go and pick things on the computer. So I'm just going to skim through this because we've got cheat sheets in the, in the library as well, and a lot of you middle schoolers have done this before, right? Make it nod, yes, that you have forecasted it through Skyward before, okay. So, and Mrs. Ambrose assures me that you all know your Skyward logins and passwords. Is that right, Mrs. Ambrose? <laughs> yes. Guarantee, she guarantees that you all know everything. If you don't, we have cheat sheet, it's okay. Um, so basically you're gonna go to the Hawkinson website and you're gonna find Skyward login, you're gonna log in with your first name, dot, last name, and your password. You're gonna open student access. Now this is different, if parents, you are on Skyward as well, you can't use your Skyward access, it has to be the student Skyward access, okay? Make sure you know that. Then you'll find over here, it says schedule, and then you will see there's two of them there. You don't want to register for Hawkinson Middle School anymore. You're gone. You're out of there. So the one at the bottom, register request courses for 1920 in Hawkinson High School. I mean, high school students now, all right. So that's where you're going to go, and then you're going to see something that looks like this. Okay, as Mr. Kimber was talking about, um, some or many of your classes are already picked for you. They can't see it very well, but you can see um, English, math, science, and one semester at health are picked for you. If you have been taking Spanish or French, we have already put you in that. Now, if you want to tell us that you, sometimes we have students who do Spanish or French didn't work out very well and they want to start again in Spanish or French one, that's fine. We can do that. Uh, we do have students who are repeating algebra again in ninth grade because they just, they need some extra with that, and that's fine too. You will have to find us individually and we can change those. You won't be allowed to change those on there. But the basics of how it goes is you find the class on the left that you want, you highlight it, click add course, and you will see it show up over there. You want to get to where your total credits are six. Okay, focus won't be on there, we'll add that later. But you want your total credits to add up to six. Okay, so that's what you do there. And then it's going to be really important, one of the really important things is that you pick alternates. You pick alternates. There's a tab right up at the top that says alternate requests. You are allowed up to three alternate requests. And that's really important, especially for freshmen. Okay, hear me on this. It's really important that you pick alternates. Okay, because as a freshman, what happens here in high school is we schedule seniors first, and then juniors, and then sophomores, and then freshmen. So there's a, there's a chance, and sometimes a good chance, that you will not get your first choice. Okay, we're going to have you pick your first choice, of course, and make sure you do that. But make sure you have alternates that are okay with you, and that are different than your first choice. Okay? Every year we hand out schedules and we get students to come in and say, oh, I didn't sign up for that. And I say, well, no, that wasn't your first choice, but that was one of your alternates. Okay? And then, if you don't pick alternates, Mr. Kimber and I get to have some fun and pick alternates for you, which is fun for us. Okay? Especially as we get to know you more, maybe we'll ask Ms. Ambrose which class would they really hate, and we'll put you in that one. Okay? So don't go there. Just make sure you pick alternates. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna move here in just a second. We're trying not to stampede out of here, but we're gonna come out these doors and head down the hallway. You will pass through the commons, which is our cafeteria, and in there, you will see some tables set up. We have some clubs and some sports represented um, that you can stop by and see them and ask questions or whatever about what that is about. Um, but on your way to the library, then once you get to the library, um, we will help you there. Another reminder, if you have not signed in yet, you can do that. Please do that before you leave. And we will all be going over there with you. So, you are free to head out those doors, take a right, and we'll head down the library.